Elliot? Well, Stephen Cree, um, thank you very much for joining us for a, a few questions. Obviously, the twin is releasing on Shudder today, actually. So, um, yep. seeing the film, it's uh, pretty pretty creepy stuff. Uh, thank you. I think. Thank you. I guess, <laughs> um, you know, I guess that's the part of the aim of the game uh, when it comes to making a, making a horror. And I think that actually, you know, I think creepy um, is a good word uh, to kind of, um, is a, a kind of overtone of the twin. It's not your, you know, it's not a, a blood and guts and, you know, saw type horror. It's much more of a psychological thinking, slow burning, creepy uh, affair. And of course, um, it has uh, a very creepy kid. And as well, who isn't creepy in real life? I will add, he's lovely in real life, but in the movie, he's very there's creepy. There's something about kids in horror films that they're, they're just way, really creepy. I, I remember I watched when I was way too young. Um, I think it was Village of the Damned, and oh, yeah. it was yeah. just it still haunts me to this day. There's there's something about the imagery of children sometimes in uh, you know a place like that in horror movies and there's i guess there's something maybe about just you know we're because we, we we kind of as a, a society as well we kind of put this idea onto children that they can see things you know that aren't there or maybe that they can see as, as you as you as you mature or you go past puberty you stop being able to see the dead people anymore or something so we, we have this idea that children are locked into uh some sort of other you know parallel dimension or something yeah and and if we could sort of hark it back to to sort of where it all began how how did you sort of get into acting as a as a way one in scotland how did i get into acting um i uh i was very very lucky and at my uh, at my school at my high school um or uh, secondary school as we say over here I had a fantastic music teacher um, called Fiona McKenzie, and they did a, when I was about 12 or 13, the, the older children, uh, the older kids, uh, did a little show of Jesus Christ Superstar. And I watched the, my, my brother was in it, my older brother was in it, and so I watched the movie with him, and I just uh, became, kind of fell in love, stroke, became obsessed with musicals. And through that, it was kind of, it was musicals that were, that were my first love and my sort of first introduction to acting. And as I say, I had this incredible teacher who um, was just a total inspiration and uh, very, very encouraging. Great. And now look at you being interviewed by a guy standing in his bedroom. And I'm, I'm not even in, I'm not even in my own house. That's okay. I'm, I'm using someone else's house because my daughter uh, is running about uh, and will probably uh, probably uh, be interested in getting involved in the interview. Yeah, no, I, I was actually in the same boat. Luckily, our wee one went to bed about 15 minutes ago, so yeah. I had to lock myself yeah. into the bedroom, and, and here we are. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'll get us back onto the um onto the movie. No worries. So you you play Anthony, and mm. not to give away the film, but it's a pretty there's some darkness to that character obviously yep. with uh, yeah, yeah. what he's been going through what was it like sort of stepping into that role you know well i mean first and foremost it was really exciting and um you know it came about in a kind of a uh, uh, very fortuitous uh manner for me Teresa palmer um you know who's the star and plays rachel who i'd done two seasons on a discovery of witches with um, the, the role, the guy who was playing the role actually had to drop out very last minute. And so Teresa recommended me to the filmmakers. Unfortunately, you know, for me, uh, they went with that. So I, I had like a week or, or, or 10 days to prepare before going out to Estonia for a couple of months um, to do it. And even though I was, uh, you know, talking about children, because we were deep in COVID at that point, I had to I had to take a big decision because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get home for the full two months I was out there. 
and uh, you know, not being able to see your kids for two months is, um, as it turns out, is actually even harder than I thought it was going to be. That was really, really, really tough. Um, but in a kind of, you know, sort of perverse way, helped inform my thought process about what Anthony uh, was going through on a, you know, on a tiny level. Or somebody who actually, you know, in the movie, he's they've they've lost, uh, you know, one of their children has died. Um, so, t- I mean, it was it's tough. It's tough. Get having to, you know, because as an actor, when you listen, you're not you're not doing any of that stuff for real, but you still you want to try and get your head into the right place. And you've got a kid as well. Having to even go to the place of thinking how you might feel if your kid died uh, is just unpleasant mm. in itself. And, you know, I've said this since I got back from this movie as well. Normally on jobs, I'm pretty good at the end of the day, just letting it go. And I don't I don't take it home with me. But maybe it's something about the fact that I was out there on my own. We were in lockdown. We were in the middle of nowhere. We were making a horror movie. Um, I It really got under my skin, actually. Yeah, yeah, that, that covered, pretty much covers off the um, next question, which was going to be: you must sort of have to go to some pretty dark places to to play a role like that. Yeah, and listen, and it's different. It's interesting, and when you see the movie as well, our characters handle the grief in different ways. As you see with Rachel, it's very more um, kind of heart on her sleeve. So I think whereas with Anthony, um, maybe you know. At first thought or at first glance for the viewers, you would think Anthony's kind of okay, but he's, uh, you know, bottling everything up and trying to suppress and, and hold, you know, hold their world together. Um, and even just kind of getting and trying to be in that mindset and having that kind of percolating around in your head every day. Um, there were a couple of days where, uh, you know, we'd done a couple of scenes where at the end of the day, Normally at the end of the day, you know, you'll get in the car and somebody will drive you back to your hotel, your apartment. But there were a couple of days where I was like, I just need to walk home today and, you know, clear mm-hmm. my head from this. Which, yeah. Um, Cause yeah, I, I can imagine it's pretty intense doing, filming a horror film. Do you, so, do you sort of have to, is it intense while you're doing it? Do you, do you have to do things to sort of um, break the tension, have a laugh? Yeah, do you know what? It's weird actually. Uh, it's it's a funny thing. It's fun because look, it is. It it was a lot of fun as well. And obviously, you know, Teresa and I knew each other uh, very well from a Discovery of Witches, and our dynamic at Discovery of Witches, our characters were so different. I found it very easy on a Discovery of Witches to you know in between takes, it was always a laugh. We were always having fun, and that's normally kind of how. I like to work, but on this, I actually found um, Teresa's, I have to say Teresa's incredible, and when you see her performance as well, at being able to switch in and out of it, you know, when the show action, she just brilliantly turns it on. I actually found that harder to do on this, um, and in fact, not even necessarily through choice, I'm very talkative and very social as a person, but I actually became quite introverted uh, mm. and quiet on this, which um, you know, is, is quite unusual for me. And I think um, sometimes on jobs without meaning to, you just, you know, you just start getting, the, the character just starts getting under your skin, I think. Yeah, no, not quite method acting, but it sort of becomes yeah. a part of you for a bit. It's certainly, it's not, con- for me, it's not conscious method acting in the sense that, oh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to stay in character for 10 or 12 hours, which is, uh, which is the popular, popular idea of method acting but mm. i think um yeah i think when you sometimes it just uh you know uh, life starts imitating life starts imitating art slightly oh well um i'm, I'm going slightly off piece here but uh shane who no, sent, no. The, sent the questions through uh, he's a big gamer and he he noticed that you've done a lot of voicing for triple a games is that correct uh, i've done a couple yeah uh i did a uh, um uh, I've done quite a popular racing game called uh, Forza, or I don't know how you pronounce it, Forza Horizon, uh, Forza Horizon 4 and Forza Horizon 5, and uh, I did a crazy game for uh, the Nintendo Switch a couple of years ago called, it's actually got, <laughs> actually I won't say, it exa- it's got a really strange title, it's called Bravely Default 2, which doesn't sound like the most exciting title, but 
Um, it's the Japanese game, and actually, it's the same title uh, in the, in Japan. And um, I play this uh, kind of wizened scholar called Elvis. Oh, yeah. And in the Japanese version, the guy's voice sounds, I think, sounds incredible and really kind of mystical uh, and wizened. And uh, the, what like, I play it like, I kind of sound like Billy Connolly on steroids. <laughs> it's off the charts. And I, I had such great fun playing it. And actually, I never normally do this, but I was quite interested to see what the response to the game would be. And I saw quite a lot of comments from people saying, why the hell did they get somebody non-Scottish to play Scottish? Yeah. You know, because my <laughs> accent sounded so put on. Oh, it's classic. Um, I'm, I'm running out of time and I've got to pass you on. But just quickly, I, I saw on your Instagram, I thought I should probably mention it. Uh, you, you're doing some cameo videos. Is that still happening for Raise Funds for Ukraine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, was, uh, I started off doing them for... When the, when the lockdown happened, uh, when the first lockdown happened a couple of years ago, Cameo had been in touch with me before uh, and asked uh, if I wanted to do them. And it wasn't really something that I was interested in doing for personal gain. Uh, and there's an amazing charity over here called Cash for Kids, uh, which raises money for children and families who are living on or below the poverty line. And I mean, probably, I don't, fairly astoundingly to me, one in four families in Scotland uh, are living below the poverty line. Mm. And so I felt that actually, especially because it was during lockdown as well, doing the cameo videos was a great way to raise money. And, you know, then a couple of months ago, there was a period where um, uh, I did it for Ukraine uh, mm. as well. So it's, um, you know, it takes me two or three minutes to do them. I can yeah. do them whenever I, wherever I am. And, uh, you know, I think people seem, to, people seem to enjoy them and it's uh, all for a good cause. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic course. That's that's awesome stuff. I'm uh, I'm sorry, I've run out of time, so I've got to I've got to uh, wrap this up. But thanks so much for having a chat to us. No worries. And, I, I, um, I, I, I I take about five minutes to answer a ten second question. <laughs> no, no, no. That was brilliant. It was it was a great chat. Thanks so much, Stephen. And uh, nice one. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure um, the twins going to go very well here in New Zealand. Nice one. Fingers crossed. Thanks, Matt. Make there in the ground. We didn't leave him. He is always.